Hello and welcome to the fifth video in a series of tutorials on programming in C. To start with I've taken the file from CH4, so chapter 4, CH4.C and deleted everything inside it and left over a printf with a new line character for using later on here. In this tutorial video we're going to look a little bit about logic programming in C. To start with we'll get ourselves some variables to play with, so we'll have num1 equals 5 in num 2 equals 6 and int num 3 equals let's say 28 and int num 4 equals say 61. And now in C what you can do if you type if open and close brackets and then open a curly brace and close a curly brace we have a similar situation with the curly braces like we did for the main function here in the sense that this is a code block that belongs to this if statement. What if will do, it will say if whatever inside these brackets is true, then it will execute whatever code is inside this statement block here. So if I say if num1 is greater than 4, and this is why I've put this here because I'm going to copy and paste it in, I can say num1 is greater than 4 and print a new line here. I'll just save that and compile it and run it before we do anything else over on the console here, ch5.c-o and call it ch5. Now run and now you can see indeed it's printing this statement because num1 is indeed greater than 4. If I change this to 6 and compile the program it doesn't print anything when I run the program because num1 isn't greater than 6. But if I make this 5 and compile the program, it doesn't print anything either. However, if I say greater than or equal to 5, then when I compile and run, it does indeed say, OK, num1 is greater than 4 here, which is still true, but I forgot to change this to greater than or equal to 5. But you get the idea. So that's the first thing you can do. Sometimes you will see some, I'll change this to greater than or equal to 5 now, syntax when people, when you're reading other people's C programs, if you've only got one line inside here, inside this code black, you actually don't need the curly braces here. So this will still compile and print, and it still prints and executes the if statement as if the curly braces were there. I don't like, personally I don't like doing that. I always like having the code block there in this format because I find it easier to read and understand what, understand what belongs to what because what you can end up with some programs is if, 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 all in one nice long diagonal here but I, I end up losing track of what belongs to what so I always tend to put a code block in. So now what we can do is we can, here we have if number one, num1 one is greater than five then print this line. But what we can say, if it isn't, we can say else, and again a code block, and inside the code block, if this statement here isn't true, then it will put whatever's inside the else clause block, the else block here, the code block for the else keyword here. So in this case it will be num1 is less than 5. So if I just compile that and run it, you get the idea. It now says num1 is less than 5. I'll just delete that because it's annoying me putting an extra line on when I run the program here on the end. So it's fairly simple and not really rocket science. Now what you could do, you can also use something called an else if. Okay, so you could say else if open and close brackets, num1 equals 5 and then put an else statement on the end. I'll just put a line to print in here. Now a couple of things here before we start. First of all, like I said, it's executed if the value in the brackets is true, it does this. Else if this statement is true, it will do what's ever inside this code block, else it will do this. 
Now, this clearly means greater than. We've had greater than equal. Obviously, that will be less than, and that will be less than and equal. They're fairly self-explanatory. This one here means equals, and it's another one that can cause, particularly when you start programming in C, a number of annoying bugs. If I just put the one equals in here, that would be setting num1 to the value of 5, rather than saying, is it equal to 5? So if I save this program as it is at the moment and compile it and run it, we get num1 is equal to 5 because it is indeed equal to 5. Now if I just change this to put in a format specifier and print num1, we get exactly the same print when I compile. Num1 is equal to 5. But the reason I want to do that is because I actually want to set now num1 equal to 10. So there's a bug here. I want to say else if num1 is equal to 10, but I've only put 1 equals in, and then we can compile and see what happens. And now it does print this line, but now as you can see, num1 is now has the value of 10. And this is where you need to be very, very careful with this double equals when you first start programming, because it's an easy mistake to make, and again can cause horrendously confusing bugs. You wonder why it's printing this line at all. The reason is, it's saying else if. Now, when you execute a statement, if you have a 1 in there, then the statement is true, because there's something there. If you have a 0, then the statement is false. So if instead of this statement here, I simply had a 1, so if 1, it would be saying, essentially, if we have anything but 0, then whatever's in this bracket is executing. That's saying it's true, the state is true. And that's what's happening here, because what you can you can do, and maybe we'll do later on we're in the chess program, much later on in C, is you can often shorten things down inside expressions. So you, you could say here, if num1 equals 10 is greater than 9, and what this is doing, it's saying, first of all, set num1 to the value of 10, and then ask if it's greater than 9. And it's all on one line, rather than somewhere else outside here, setting num1 to 10 first. So that's why things like this work. But if you do a statement like this, you're not saying if num1 is equal to 10, you're setting the value to 10, and then asking, is the value inside the brackets true? Well, it's non-zero, so it's true. So you need to remember to include the double equals. And if we now compile that... We now get the S else statement coming out the bottom. The bottom. So it's critical to remember that you need the double equals. Okay, so let's move on to some other operators now. Take them off. So we could say if num1 is greater than or equal to 5, and num3 is greater than 27, which it is, then print true. And we'll put an else in here. And we'll print false. And save and compile, and I'll go through it. OK, so it prints true. What it's saying here is, if evaluates this, and this double and here is an and this side of the and evaluates to true then print this line otherwise print this one so if i change this to greater than 28 now num3 is 28 so it's not greater than 28 then this will evaluate to false as you can see here okay now What you also have is something called the OR operator, which is this double vertical line here. Now I'm saying if num1 is greater than or equal to 5 or num3 is greater than 28, now we know that this one is true, then we should evaluate to true, which we do. And to the same way, I could say if num1 is greater than 55 or num3 is greater than 27, will also then evaluate to true. So I think you get the idea here with the OR. 
Now we could have something else. We have something called the not equals. We've already had the equals, so if num1 equals 5, for example, we can compile and that's true. If we then put an exclamation mark here, it means not equals. So this now will evaluate to false, as you can see here. So this means not equals. Or you could say if num1 is not equal to 5 and num3 equals 28, this will evaluate and print true. Because number one, hang on a minute. No, it won't, because I'm silly. Let's make that a four. If num one is not equal to four, and it isn't equal to four, it's equal to five, and num three is equal to 28, which it is, then it evaluates to true. If I put the five here, if num1 is not equal to 5, well that's false because it is equal to 5 and well we'll already stop there for the compiler because we want both statements to be true and one of them isn't. So when I compile this and run it, it comes as false. So we've got and, we've got not equals, we've been through greater than, equals, we've got the or and now these things can also be combined into expressions. For example, you could have something like if Oh, we've already got num3 plus num1 multiplied by num2 inside brackets is greater than num4 evaluate to true. So it's a bigger expression and could be slightly harder to read but it's actually quite simple. We've got the brackets here so again if this expression here what's inside these brackets is greater than num4 then print true and the expression here is num3 which is 28 plus num1 times num2 so 30 so if 28 plus 30, 58, is greater than 61, then print true. But it's false, so we get false printing here. Now what would be interesting is if we took out the brackets. You should always put the brackets in for the sake of your own clarity when you're reading your own code. But if we compile this and then run it, we also get the value for and um, what this has actually done is something called operator precedence, which is something you can read about more online because there's a, a lot of articles about it. But the compiler evaluates when there are no brackets in a certain sequence. The first one it'll evaluate in this line is this expression here. The next thing it'll evaluate in this line is adding the num3 to these two. So the same expression as before, but we've moved the brackets. And lastly, it'll then evaluate this expression here. And this is something that you need to also be aware of. And in fact, my recommendation is when you program it is simply for each expression that you have. So first we want this multiplied by this. We want it added to num3. And we want to know if it's greater than num4. It's simply to put brackets around it so that it's clear of what belongs to what. So you can see here that we want to know if this set is greater than num4 and it's all contained nicely and readable inside brackets. But it's good to be aware of operator precedence so you know if you don't have brackets or you're reading someone else's code without brackets what might be evaluated first. But again I recommend that you use brackets so that it's clear what's being evaluated before what. Okay, that's it for this video. It's a very quick run through of using... I'll just put some in comments here so we can have a quick overview and remember We've looked at the equals operator, if one number is equal to another. Remember, we've not used the single equals because that's simply setting the value. We've used not equal to, we've used greater than, and greater than and equal to. I haven't used it, but you can also use less than, less than and equal to. They work exactly the same way. And then we have our and operator, so when you're using an expression, you're saying x and y 
Then we've also used or, so we've said x or y evaluates to true. And I think that's it for all that we've used in this video. Yes, it is. But these are basically all of the logic operators, really, that you'll be using inside your if and your else statements. And what we've also looked at very quickly is that you can use an if. It evaluates the expression in the brackets and then runs whatever is inside the corresponding code block for if. We've also seen that if this expression inside the if here isn't true, and you want, when it's not true, to, to print something. Whoops, sorry about that. I'm having trouble with the Mac keyboard and Windows. Then it'll run inside here. And if you want to do something else, you can have an else if. And in fact, you can have as many else ifs as you want combined in this way. Tidy this up slightly. And finally, an else on the end. So what this will do here is say, if this, let's call it statement x is true, do what's ever inside this block. Else, if this statement is true, do whatever is inside these blocks. Else, if this statement z is true. Otherwise, do whatever is inside this block here. So I hope that's relatively clear. It's not very difficult. It's a matter simply of getting used to programming them time and time and again to get familiar with how it all works. But like in the last tutorial video where I talked about some gotchas with floating points, the, the gotchas really here are that make sure your expressions are enclosed in brackets quite clearly so they get evaluated in the correct order. Okay, that's it then. Thank you very much for watching the video. Comments, questions are welcome as always on YouTube. Till the next time.